Hi, I'm Pastor Dallas Billington, Senior Pastor here at City Church, and we want to welcome you today to our services. We hope that no matter what you're facing in life, that through the message today, through God's Word, He will truly encourage your heart. Good morning, City Church. Just want to welcome you today. i got a few quick announcements. Our teens usually don't meet on uh, this particular date, but they will be meeting today. So teens, you're meeting today. Uh, you know where to go. Uh, also, our children's area. We've been doing some renovations back there, and we had a little holdup on the carpet. Uh, you know, the hurricane that's just so devastating to the Bahamas and to the East Coast. Uh, just definitely want to be in, in prayer for that. But actually, the carpet was coming from down south, as a lot of the carpet is. And so that got held up, of course, uh, because of the hurricane. But uh, it's really looking great back there, and hopefully that'll be in in a couple weeks, and we'll be able to finish that up. Uh, there's a card in the back. Uh, many of you know Bonnie Boffman. She sings on the praise team here, and Bonnie's really been going some through some health issues. And uh, we got a card for her in the back, and we just want that thing signed by everybody who can. So it'll be on the back table. Uh, make sure you stop by and, and sign that. Uh, very special date, October the 5th, uh, at KJ's Run for Mental Health and Animal Rescue. And uh, if you know John and Sherry and Dawn and the family, they've done an amazing job. Uh, to honor KJ's life, and uh, what a great event. It's going to be at Portage Lake State Park. It's going to be October the 5th. That's a Saturday. And all the proceeds go uh, to uh, help with mental health and also animal rescue, two just critical, critical areas that are near and dear to my heart. And you know, in two years, this is what's so amazing. God has blessed us so much. In two years, they've raised over $60,000. And I, I just think that's amazing. And that's just through the, their, their heart and uh, just God blessing that. So even if you don't run, you can walk. And I just encourage you to be a part of that. It is pet friendly, so you can bring your animals. And actually, Pastor Ben rode his dog last year. <laughs> if you know his dog, is about as big as me. And he just saddled him up and rode him. So whatever works, uh, just to be literally... To be a part of that is so important. So I'm sure uh, Sherry will have uh, some information for you there in the back. You know, this is a time of year that uh, I just love. I love the weather, and I love to get up here. I, I really love college football, but I also like professional football. But I love college football. I love watching it. Yesterday was so exciting. You know, I, I follow a number of different teams, and some of them did well, some of them didn't. But it's just so, it's such an exciting time of year. And You know, I think about that. You see so many people, especially people in, in Cleveland, diehard Browns fans, and just how that they support their team. And it's been amazing. You know, the last few years has been kind of rough to support. And, but people still support the, the team. I, there's a couple Steelers fans in here, but we ignore Jim anyway. But uh, to support the team. But, you know, there are people that are kind of fair weather fans too, right? And they support the team as long as they're winning. But then when things start going downhill, boy, you know, they jump off the bandwagon and they're off to something else. And you see that in sports. But then there's the people that no matter what happens, they're going to support their team. And uh, I always respect people like that because I've, I've really liked the same teams just about my whole life. And I kind of have an eclectic uh, taste in the teams I like, but I've always stuck by them and supported them. And, you know, I think about that in terms of our faith. There's a lot of times that in our faith, we become fair weather fans of Jesus Christ, don't we? When things get rough or when people come against us, and maybe it's people at work, maybe it's people we know, and they, they question us, and, and we kind of back off. We don't really have that full support. We need to be careful in our lives. You know, Romans 1.16 tells us, it says, For I am not ashamed of the gospel of Christ, for it is the power of God until salvation to everyone that believeth. You know, we never need to be ashamed of who we support. We never need to be ashamed of Jesus Christ. Because, you know, when he was on that cross, he wasn't ashamed of, ashamed of me and you. When he died for us, died for the sins of the world, he wasn't ashamed of us. So let's never be fair weather when it comes to our, our Savior. Let's never be fair weather when it comes to our faith. Let's always support our Lord and Savior. Let's never be ashamed of him. Let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, God, I thank you, Lord. I thank you, God, that we can stand up and say that we serve the God of this universe. Lord, that we never need to be ashamed of you. You're never ashamed of us, God. Lord, you gave your life for us. 
And Lord, today we want to be that shining vessel for you. And Lord, we want to support you. We want to have our faith shine into a dark world. Lord, we thank you for never giving up on us. In Christ's name, amen. Oh, we're glad you're with us today. If you're visiting with us, we're just thankful you're here today. And we're uh, continuing a series. I was thinking about this a few weeks ago, that we don't, we don't think enough about what we actually have as believers. In other words, how different in some ways that we can live in life and how that we can have victory in life compared to anybody in the world that doesn't know Jesus or uh, you know, has anything, not a clue about the Bible and how that uh, in this life we can live in such a way that we have victory all the time. We're going to look at the verses today. doesn't mean you're actually winning all the time because we, you know, can't be like, you know, it's not realistic to, to be in a happy, happy, happy mood all the time, is it? You, just, you know, you'd like to be, but it's not real. Uh, but to have that underlying peace and all the different things. So I started thinking a few weeks ago, and then we'll pray about it. What do we have different? Is a believer. What do, what do we have to, to live in that we can capture in our mind and realize, hey, I need to think about what I can gain and what I receive, or either way, what I receive and what I can gain as a Christian. Last week we talked about security, and this week we, what we have, and we continue this series, it's not really in any order, but this week we're going to look at that we can actually live with grace and favor. And uh, let's pray. Father, we are so thankful today for your grace, for the favor that you've poured on our life. We don't deserve it, but yet even as frail human beings that we might have messed up this week, Lord, as a believer, we might have said something, thought something, did something, and Lord, as long as we come before you, you tell us that you're faithful and just to cleanse us from all unrighteousness, and we can reign in this life. Lord, whatever someone has come in here with today, let them know that because of your grace, you give us that favor in life through your son, Jesus Christ. In your name we pray, amen. So we're going to look at uh, Ephesians chapter 2 in just a minute. Ephesians chapter uh, Two and verses uh, four through eight, I think. I don't know if I put all that on there or not, Jim. But anyways, when you think about grace, I always think about this. I go back to grade school, which was a few years ago. <clears throat> a buddy... <laughs> well, that's not funny. I, I, I'm just saying, I was just making a point. <clears throat> wow, okay. I guess I'm showing my age anyway. So go back to grade school. And uh, I think it was in sixth grade, and a buddy of mine comes in, and uh, it's so vivid that it, it's just right there every time I think and hear about the word grace in the Bible. And uh, he comes in to me, and his name, first name is Rick, and uh, Rick says, hey, Dow, man, I got in real trouble this weekend. And I said, well, what happened, Rick? <clears throat> he said, well, you know, mom, dad brother and sister, me, who are all around the, <clears throat> the dinner table and it's time to, to pray and mom looks at me and says, Rick, say grace tonight. And uh, everybody brows their head and he goes, grace, <laughs> wham. She just, she says, mom, just wham. It just came right across the table like, like it was just like that. <laughs> and I thought, you know, I, I never, every, every time I hear the word grace, I think about that. But here's, here's the deal. When we think about the Lord, when, when we think about um, what he's done for us, what he's given us, and, and who he is, we sometimes put him in this, uh, in this box that, that it's more of fire and brimstone and, and, and yes, God is a loving God and he is a judging God, but also that he, he is a God of grace. 
And we have to understand, what, what is that? What defines that? And I want you to know that you and I, accepting Christ as our Savior, involved one thing. It, Christ's death on the cross, and you and I willing to take a step of faith in your car, in a church service, by your bed at home. I, I don't know where it was, but you heard the gospel, and you prayed. Now, it, this is what's so amazing about that, and we're going to read this verse, is that, you know what is so amazing? Anyone that you go to, anybody that you talk to, no matter where they're at in life, if they were willing to take that step of faith, Jesus will save them, anyone. You know, I've been hearing a lot about, uh, you know, we know in the radical Muslims and things across the world, how that, that there's been so many people praying for people in those situations that they're actually having uh, dreams of Jesus, and many of them are coming to Christ as their Savior because there's so many people praying that there's no other way really to... to Anyway, so you think about it. There's no really way to reach them. And now there's so many people concerned on what's happening that through those prayers, many of those are coming to Christ. They're having dreams, and, re and Jesus is showing them who he is. And they're praying, accepting Christ as their Savior. So I want you to know that it doesn't matter who. So it involves grace. What is that? And then we're going to read the verse. It's, it's we can look at grace is, is that unmerited favor. There's nothing that you or I could have done to, 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 to be to where we could stand righteous in front of God. Through his son. And this is what I so love. Uh, about what we do at City Church is that it's not about a religion. It's not about anything else. It's not about uh, who you are, what you were born into, like in India, the different levels that they have and, and all the different things. And all the religions of the world, it's about Jesus Christ. And because of the grace, unmerited favor, all we have to do is take that step of faith. It's a great passage in the Old Testament. And it says, and this is the... This is the, the uh, this is the greatest thing you can share with people, and you don't have to get frustrated when you're when, or frustrated when you're you're witnessing to people. It's easy. Uh, you just say, "Well, you know, if you're not really believe me, and you don't, you know, whatever." He said, I, "I'm gonna I'm gonna make you a challenge. Sometime, whether it's tonight, next week, call out to the name of Jesus, and and let Him reveal to you who He is, because the Bible says in the Old Testament, if you seek Him, you will find Him." And so, and, and it's so unbelievable how the Lord works. We, we get too uptight about our family and friends that don't know Jesus. And I just want you to take a deep breath. You pray for them. When you have the opportunity, you witness. And, and the main thing that the more confident they see you and me in our faith, the more they start to think about where they are in life. So what does the scripture tell us in Ephesians chapter 2, verses uh, I think verses 6 through 8, uh, I'm, I'm not sure, I think, Jim, that's where we're at, but actually, let me go, I'm going to read verse 4, even if it's not, because I, I want to go back to that, but God, who is rich in mercy because of his great love, which he has loved us, even when we were dead in trespasses, made us, here we go, listen, made us alive together with Christ, by grace you have been saved raised us up together, and made us sit together in heavenly places in Christ Jesus, that in the ages to come he might show us the exceedingly riches of his grace in his kindness towards us in Christ Jesus. For by grace you have been saved through faith. In other words, we, what we talked about, you had to take that step. And that not of yourselves, it is a gift of God. There's something interesting here that we refer to time to time at the church about how that in the ages to come, he will show us things in heaven. He will show us the exceedingly riches of his grace. There was a 
listening to a, a theologian this week, a, a pastor, but he's also a, a teaches different things in seminary. And he was talking about, if you read the Bible, where the angels surround God in heaven and they sing holy, holy, holy. And I've never really heard this before. And he said, if you go back and you look at it the way it is written in the original language, when they get to the third one and they go back to sing again, there's so much power there and why it's repetitive is because on the third holy, they, they are revealed something new, another attribute of God all throughout eternity. And I believe that's what we're going to see. Every day in heaven, we're going to realize through the ages to come, man, Lord, you saved me. You saved my family. I can't believe we're here. And we're here for another thousand, another hundred. We're here for eternity. And that's what we will begin to grasp in the ages to come. Anyways, that unmerited favor, something so important here, I believe that so many of us don't have today. And that's when we take a deep breath. So many, I talk to so many people, they're so busy. Everybody's so busy. And you just say, you, you, the, the number one problem with Americans today, you know what it is when it comes to our physical being? They, they did or, when they ask, they don't get enough sleep. It's the number one problem. They're not resting. Maybe that's you. Maybe whatever you walked in that door with today. It's so in your mind, you can't, you, you race from it, don't you? And, and, and I want you to be careful of this because whatever is happening in your life, this is what the devil does. The longer you think about whatever the problem is and you don't see Jesus, he exaggerates it. And it gets bigger and bigger and bigger. Instead, the Lord, he gives us an insight to that grace once you know that you are secure, as we talked about last week in heaven, you're secure with Jesus, that you have that hope. No matter what happens, he's in control. The Bible says, well, we can rest. I, I, we have to go a step further because I hear many preachers talking about that. Well, you, you know, the Lord tells us to rest, and, and I'm sitting there thinking, well, yeah. Well, then show me how I need to rest, will you? You know, that's, that's what, we got to go a little bit further with that. You say, okay, you just need to rest as a believer because, you know, Jesus says to rest. Okay. All right. Well, how does that happen? All right, here, we're going to read how it happens. Verse 6, raised us up together and made us sit together in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. Okay, now, listen to this. That in the ages to come, we read, we read that. The Bible tells us that when we are raised up together and we sit in heavenly places, you're sitting. You're sitting next to Jesus. You're with Jesus, so you're resting. But again, I need it a little more defined. What does that mean? How am I supposed to rest as believers? Here's how. You have something going on in your life right now, and you can't rest from it then it's defined that we know because of his grace, that rest comes knowing who we are in him, but we rest, here it is, we rest in truth. You know the truth? The truth shall set you free. When we know what the, the, the truth is, what does God tell us? He gives us promises. His word is truth. His truth is promises. You and I can rest today because we know what his truth is. It's Jesus and what Jesus tells us all throughout this book called the Bible. He says, what's on your mind? What's on your heart? Be anxious for nothing. But in everything by prayer, come to me. Talk to me about it. And I'll guard your heart and your mind, whatever it is. See, we can rest today here. I want you to get this because you know what the truth is. Every time the devil talks to you and me, he's lying. Every time. He's lying when you, you look on Facebook and you think, you know, or whatever it might be on social media and all these other people have it together. They don't have it together. 
They just put the best of them up there. And you think you can't compare with that. It's the devil lying to you. Every time that we're in situations, well, I, I don't know. You know, I'm not as equipped in this area. and I don't know how the Lord, I, I don't know what the Lord, I don't know what he's going to, what am I going to do in life? Jesus, because of his grace, has saved you. And now when we sit with him in heavenly places, you know what he does? You're above all of it. You can see what's going on. In other words, you, you can have discernment. You can actually see into the spiritual world. You and I can see in such a place, you know, wait a minute. I can go to the Bible and, and I can read here and, oh, that's right. God's not the author of confusion. What if I'm confused about this? That's not of the Lord. See, every time we open up the word and the word is his promises and the promises are truth, we rest. Every time, if you're here today and you're, there's something that, is, that, is really, that has got you going and you can't rest from, maybe it's your finances and God shall, shall supply all our needs according to his riches. That's a promise. We need to remind ourselves. Because the devil's coming at you all the time right here. He's hitting you every time you get in a car, every time you're on the phone with somebody, every time it's quiet, you're thinking about it. And you and I need to know that if we're going to rest, we need to know what the truth is. And when we are reminded of the truth, we can rest. God's got it. No matter what's going on in your life. Why? We go back to his grace. He does for you because you and I were willing to believe by grace we were saved. We were willing to believe who Jesus Christ is, that he died on the cross for our sins, and we ask him into our heart. From that day forward, he's got you. He's got your back. As the psalm says, he's behind you and in front of you. And whatever the devil tries to do, and he gives his angels, which we always talk about, at least two, his angels charge over you, protecting you. I can't do it for you. You've got to do it right here. What you've got to do is this. You've got to open the promises, which are truth, and then you can rest. So once we do that, once we trust in him and we begin to rest, no matter what's happening in our life because of that grace, something else happens. See, we begin to live in that grace, then favor is added to it. A lot of times people can, can say that, and, and that's true if you define it in a dictionary. You can look up both, and they both pretty much say the same thing, grace and favor, about the same thing. But if I can define it for you today, grace is through what we just talked about, the unmerited favor of God. There's nothing that we could have done. And we just have to go before him. We'll never figure out why we were sinners. Christ died for us. And we just go before him. And we don't get it, but he did it. He, he saved us. And we're so grateful because of his unmerited favor. Then that favor that's added to it on, for you and for me on a daily basis, that rest that you and I have, and he, all of a sudden he starts adding all these things in your life that you're just like, wow, I can't, I, this is unbelievable. That's favor, because you are willing to believe who Jesus is. God blesses you and me, not because of our works, not because of what we do and give. God blesses you because you and I were willing to believe in his son, Jesus Christ, dying on the cross for our sins. You and I are blessed because of Jesus. And when we understand that, and we begin to rest, and we begin to believe the truths, and the truths, they calm us from whatever is happening in our life. It's a promise. God can't lie to you. He won't lie to you. Then what, what happens next? We'll look at this verse and close a little bit. In uh, the book of Acts, it's church history in the, old, in the New Testament. In uh, Acts and... Chapter, chapter 7. The Bible tells us if you knew much about Stephen, who was a, a, a great, if you will, soldier for Christ, 
in the New Testament church being the first martyr that we know of that died for the cause of Christ. They ask him to really, well, if, if this is who Jesus is, then convince us he's before all these people, before they actually stoned him to death. And he had this great, unbelievable, spirit-filled message. And I want us to focus just on one passage of it. In Acts chapter 7 and verse 9 and 10, he goes back and he begins to talk about his heritage and the Jewish people. And he says, and the patriarchs becoming envious, in other words, his brothers sold Joseph in the Old Testament in Genesis, Joseph into Egypt, but God was with him. Do you know I want you to know something today? You might be stripped of everything that you have, which Joseph was, but God is still with you. His favor is still on your life. That's amazing to think. From this world standpoint, nothing. You, everything is taken away. But when God is with you, God is with you. No one, nothing in this world can do, the devil, no one can do anything to take that off of you, what's in you. Everything was taken away from him. His brothers lied about him, told their father that he was dead from a, from a, a ferocious animal, probably a lion. Sold him into a language that he didn't know, a culture that he didn't know, and he became a prisoner in that land. But God was with him. I want you to know today, just because you're going through something very difficult maybe right now, God is still with you. It's not your circumstance. And, and what is going to happen is how we're going to close today. What happened? And delivered him out of, this is so good, delivered him out of a few, some, a lot. No, it says of all his troubles. Now, you say, Dallas, you know, <laughs> yeah, Joseph was in 12 years, 12 years in prison. Do I got to go through that? I hope not. I don't know. But I know whatever you're going through. I, don't, I can't put a time limit on it. But whatever it is, add to, just, just throw in a few other things. Whatever is the height right now, or whatever you're going through, throw in a few more problems that you have. Just throw them all in. Because God is going to deliver you out of all of them. That's his favor. What do we have to do? It's so hard. But it's simple. We just have to, as we're going through that, and you can't see, and you don't know what's going on, you have to trust him. You know what? I often think about Joseph in the Old Testament, and we're going to finish with that portion, and how it goes on in 12 to 14 years. Some say that he was in prison. But when it gets this, it's here. And, and, and you know, he thinks he's getting out. You ever get to that place, you know, you think you're getting that check in the mail? Huh? Or you think, you think yeah, you're getting that promotion? Or something's getting ready to happen that you're getting married and it's going to be blissful? Right? And, all, and it is good. Don't get me wrong. But I'm just saying... You have an idea of, you know, what, you know, it's going to be. And all of a sudden, something changes. Wait a minute. Has God changed? No. What he's telling you is this, is to hold on. Because through those marriage or finance, work, he's going to get you through. Here's what I'm getting at. And Joseph was just getting ready to get out. You know, you just, you know what's going to happen. You are just ready to, man, you know, man, you're just, you're thanking the Lord, you're getting out. And all of a sudden it says in, in, in book of Genesis, and Joseph was in prison two more years. I, I, don't, I don't understand that. 
And I don't, I don't know why maybe that you're going through what you're going through. And I cannot put a time limit on. All of us are different. But why was it two more years? Why was it so long? Why was it so long with Joseph? Let's close with this. And delivered him out of all his troubles and gave him favor and wisdom in the presence of Pharaoh, king of Egypt, and he made him governor over Egypt and all his house. That's like you and I going from nothing to reaching the highest office in the land to influencing all our country from you being homeless on the street. We can't really picture that. And you know, if God does it sooner, if God does it when you and I want it to happen, we're going to mess it up because we are frail human beings. And we say, oh, I'll never forget. Do you know how many times that I have gone to see people in the hospital? Hundreds and hundreds, I mean thousands over the years. But I'm saying probably a couple hundred times when I give you this uh, picture that these people swear up and down to me, which I don't, I don't need them to say this. I'll die, you know, I mean, I know what's happening. Man, I'm just saying, I've been really talking to the Lord. Been here. I will see you the first Sunday that I'm out of church. I will be there. I will be there. I'm going to get out of here. Man, I'm going to tell you, I'm going to serve the Lord. Man, they get out. And I, don't, I don't know. I don't, they're not here. And there's been a lot of them not here. Why is that? It's human nature. Now, here's what we don't like. Here's what you and I don't like. Two more years. That's how we got to figure it out. This has been going on long enough. Lord, I don't get this. I, I, I can't explain it for it. I just know that you're going to receive what Joseph did, favor. God is going to bless you and give you favor and wisdom, and he's going to put you in a position that is going to blow you away down the road that you would have never, ever thought that you would be there, all because you were willing in that time of adversity to trust him. What does the Lord do? Why does he do that? You know why? You know why that sometimes things go longer in our life? Because the Lord is going to so bless you that he doesn't want you to mess up and walk away from him. That's why it goes on many, many times. Because he knows we have to in some ways remember, remember where we were and who brought us out. Joseph never forgot because it was 13 to 14 years. But here's where I want to encourage you today as we close. That favor was on Joseph when he had nothing. What that favor is in your life and my life today keeps you going. The Lord just does something. It might not change everything, but because of the grace in your life through Jesus, he's going to bless you. It might not get you out of your situation, but he's going to get you just enough. You know, it, it says in the New Testament, a verse tells us that, that his grace is sufficient. In other words, it's overflowing. It's unbelievably overflowing just for today. Well, we want tomorrow thrown in. And the Lord's saying, no, I, I'm, I got you just for today because you're going to have that faith to trust in me for tomorrow. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to so bless you and so be with you no matter how much you're hurting. I'm going to so instill in you by something that I could have only done for you just this day, I'm going to do just to show you that I'm with you. Remember when Joseph was, he's being blessed. He thought he's getting out. Potiphar, he was taking care of all of Potiphar's household. He was, Potiphar was over hundreds and hundreds of men in the army, and he trusted Joseph. He let Joseph do everything, even as a slave in his house, because he trusted him. Potiphar's wife accused Joseph of trying to rape her. Potiphar had no choice in that day 
would have just slit his throat, would have just killed him. But he threw him in prison instead. Why? Because God's favor was on his life. You know what I often think about every time I read that story? What did Potiphar's wife think when Joseph became in control of just about everything in Egypt? The Bible tells us that when you do good and you're persecuted for it and things go rough for you in this life, that down the road others will be ashamed what they have done to you Because God is going to so bless you, no one can deny that God is with you. Hang in there today. Know that it might just be just enough blessing to get you through today. But know that it hasn't completely happened to where God is going to explode what he is in your life with that favor. Unbelievable blessing. You're not ready. It's not that you're not ready prepared as a believer. You're just not ready to handle the blessing. It's just like a kid at 18 years old, and his dad gets him a brand new, if you will, Corvette and throws him the keys. What's the kid going to do? He's going to get in a wreck. He doesn't appreciate it. He doesn't know how to handle it. What the Lord is telling you today, he's got you to a place to where he knows who you are. He knows how much you can handle. And I want you to know, here's the closing. Here's what he's going to do. The Bible tells us about Joseph and the favor that was on him and the blessing when he was in prison, when he was at Potiphar, all those different things. God was with him. And then, here's it is. Here it is. So why don't you get Immediately, he was out of prison. God is not going to take you through, or he's not going to let the devil do one thing one second longer in your life until you're ready. You say, what do you mean, Dallas? What I mean is this. When the Lord sees that exactly you need in your life what you need, that he's tempered you through those trials and testings and whatever has been in your life, and the favor's still there, You're going to get there. He's telling you. He's doing something little by little. You just know. You can't figure it out. And here's what happens when when you're blessed. Let me back up for a minute. When you're so blessed and you get those blessings, you look back. I've heard it said many, many times, including myself, how in the world did did I go through that? How did I get through that? It's because God's favor was on your life in such a way that he always gave you hope. He always gave you hope. He's coming through. You and I can sit down with him, take a deep breath and rest today, and let him see as we see from his advantage point. He's got it handled, whatever it is. And he's going to take you along the way that even through the adversity, he wants you to know he's there with you. And it said... With Joseph, the favor was so unbelievable that within 24 hours of 12 to 13 to 14 years of hurt and harm in his life from the devil, as he told his brothers, you meant it for evil. The devil meant it for evil. But God has turned it into good, and through it, others will be in heaven. And within 24 hours, Joseph went from being in prison to being second in command over millions of people in all the finances of Egypt. (laughs) That's the God we serve. And I want you to know today, as a believer, you're no different. Because of God's grace... His unmerited favor through his son, Jesus Christ. He sees us in all our flaws, but he looks at us through the blood of Jesus. And he forgives us. And then he says, you're my child, and I know this is hard what you're going through, but hold on. And here's a little something more, and a little something more, and a little something before you know it. A year will go by, another year, and all of a sudden, that's it. Lord says you're ready. 
and he will bless you the rest of your life. And you'll never forget to know who the blessings came from. And you'll say, Jesus, thank you all the days of your life. Thank you. And the more that we praise him and we thank him, holy, 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 the more we see something new, what he's done for us. And man, this life can turn into something so discouraging to inner strength that you have, to know that the Lord's coming through. And as I close today, whatever's on your hearts, whatever's on your mind, everybody, it's something different. I want you to know, to Jesus, you're his child, and it's so important to him to protect you and to get you through this. And then in just a day or two, before you know it, you will be blessed. And we will thank him all through eternity in the ages to come. We can live with grace and favor because of Jesus Christ. Let's pray. So our heads are bowed today. You know, take what it is right now. What the devil has exaggerated in your life. I'm not saying it's not a problem. But I'm saying the devil's exaggerated it. I want you to know. Whatever it is, just give it. Are you discouraged? Is it finances? Is, is, it, is it your marriage? Is it your family? Is it maybe your adult kids? I have not a clue, but Jesus does. Give it to him. And he's going to take it. He's going to put you right next to him. And he said, here, I want, I want you to see from my advantage point. I want you to sit down with me, and I'm going to remind you of all my promises. Trust me. Trust me with all your heart. Don't lean on your own understanding. Trust me. And then he says, I'm going to guard your mind and your heart. I'm going to supply all your needs according to my riches. I'm there with you. I'll never leave you. I will never forsake you. I'm with you through all eternity. I want you to see what I see. I want to give you hope. And I'm going to bless you. Before you know it, it will be unbelievable and you will be out of that situation. I don't know when. I don't know how. But you're a child of God, child of the King. And we live that kingdom life Seek him today with all your heart. Give it to him. Let him take it. Father, we are so grateful today. We don't have all the answers. But, Lord, we're with you. You can have us sit next to you in the midst of everything blowing up around us. We can rest because you've got this. And, Lord, maybe there's someone here whether it's YouTube or whether it's here today that maybe it's a little foreign to them. They, they're not sure about what that first step is. Lord, we'll never really totally be able to explain it to them except that we know because of your grace, you sent Jesus, your only son, died on a cross for me, for all of us here, for all of humankind through history. Lord, if there's someone here who doesn't know you as their Savior, Lord, let them try not to figure it out, but take a step of faith. And Jesus, you will do the rest. You'll save them through the blood of your Son, Jesus Christ. You'll forgive them for all of their sins. Lord, if there's someone here today, as Ben leads us, we close with this song today. May they come forward and accept you as their Savior. In Jesus' name, amen. I hope Jesus, through the power of the Holy Spirit, has spoke to you today through his word. You know, no matter what you go through, no matter what you face in life, I want you to know that through the one, Jesus Christ, through his death on the cross of Calvary, he shed his perfect blood for you and for me. 
And if you pray right now and ask Jesus into your heart, the message that you heard today, why God is speaking to you, I want you to know that you can have hope. And all you have to do is pray with me right now. Don't try and figure it out. The Lord says by faith, we accept Jesus as our Savior, and you'll have hope for eternity. You say, Dallas, will you help me? What do I have to do? Well, let me share with you a verse. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believes in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. If you're willing to believe that God sent his son to die on the cross for you, just pray this prayer with me right now. And you can have heaven as your home. Jesus will forgive you for anything you've done in this life. And you can have hope from this day forward. Pray this prayer. Dear Jesus, forgive me a sinner. I believe that you're God's son and you came and lived a perfect life and you died on the cross and you shed your perfect blood for all of my sin. And right now, Jesus, I ask you to come into my heart to forgive me for all of my sins and to cleanse me from all unrighteousness. And from this day forward, help me to live by your resurrection power. In Jesus' name. If you've prayed that prayer, we want to hear from you. Contact us through our website, City Church AC, or you can get at our church app through any of the um, streaming services, and we want you to know that we'll contact you. And from this day forward, no matter what you face, you'll always have hope knowing that Jesus is your Savior and he'll come through in your life. Thank you for being with us today.